So this is a 2023 Audi SQ5. This one comes in the premium plus trim level. Just love the overall styling of this thing. But most importantly, this powertrain is a three liter turbocharged V6 engine. And that's made it to an eight speed automatic transmission. We get 349 horsepower, 369 pound feet of torque here. We also have the sport exhaust, which I can't wait to test out on the test drive. But to the front end here, love how they blacked out the grill. LED headlamps, you also have the all weather lights as well down there. But I mean, just a, a nice aggressive stance while still looking elegant. Typical of Audi, I think. Now here we have these 20 inch alloy wheels, the Audi Sport wheels. They look really good. If you're interested in the tire specs, where are they? Right there. But passive keyless entry on all four doors. And I like how they did the, the black skirts right there to go with the rest of the gray. It looks very nice. Now, not too much going on here in the door panel, but I like, again, how it's kind of laid back. That feels almost like an Alcantara suede right there. It feels really nice. Now, the rest of this is plastic, but I like the trim here. I like that leatherette or whatever there. Power door lock controls, memory seats to set that. Just hit set, hold the number you want to set it to, and then to recall it, just press the number. One touch automatic up and down windows on all four doors, electronic child locks for the back. We do have power folding side mirrors, which we can adjust as well. And then those also have blind spot monitors right there. And then we also have a power lift gate, Bang & Olsen sound system, which sounds pretty good. And then we have our headlamp controls here. So we can adjust all of that. And there we have the hood release. And here's the power driver seat, four-way power lumbar support. And we also have thigh support as well right there. But I just drove an S7. I'm so glad I did so I can kind of see how these compare in terms of the interiors. But so far, pretty impressed. We have a power tilt and telescoping steering wheel as well. And I love those pedals. But let's check out this rear leg room. I have the seat up front adjusted for someone of my size being 6'3" having longer legs. So let's go ahead and see how we hold up in here. So almost identical leg room to the S7. So my legs, I can fit back here, but not necessarily comfortably. But seat back pockets are on both sides and we, we do have rear AC automatic climate controls and then two USB-A charge ports, 12 volt, and then the rear AC vents in the back here. And that's what the sunshade looks like. We do get that panoramic sunroof. I'll show you how that operates here in a moment. And then we can hang a shirt or so right there. And these are soft touch. So we can just turn those on or off with the touch of our finger. And finally, middle seat folds down. Cup holders are right there. But an interesting step out there. It's not necessarily uncomfortable. It's just kind of awkward getting in and out but whatever i'll tell you what looks really weird is when you have the the lift gate up just from where the tail the tail lights are actually in the lift gate that is the weirdest back end i've ever seen but again the sport exhaust very nice <laughs> but we do have the the cargo shade here we can pull up lock that into place we ever want to use that and i like how it's integrated because i can just kind of slide that back and then it's still there but i can still get to everything in the cargo space and then we also have two netted side pockets which is nice and under this all-weather floor mat we're going to see what we have under here spare tire so those of you that hate inflator kits you're welcome and then we can fold our seats down on either side by pulling this lever here and then we'll check out that space momentarily but big shout out to Auto Collection of Murfreesboro for allowing me to review this SQ5 today. I'll leave a link below in the description if you're interested in something like this. They have a pretty good inventory of luxury and exotic vehicles at any given time. So premium is what you need to put in this thing because it is a high performance engine. 
and then you can fold that down, but that's where it locks into place. And then you can hit this down here to release it, fold it back up. And you can also use that to fold it back down. And then I'm trying to see, I'm assuming we don't have any space to lean it up. Let's try it though. Okay, we can lean it back a little bit. So we only have like that difference there when it's all the way up and when it's all the way back. But you can technically lean it back a few centimeters. Now to the front passenger seat here, we get that same power adjustability with the four-way lumbar support. Again, that seat is beautiful. And then we do have that thigh support as well. There's a lockable glove compartment here. And for the record, I don't know whose napkins and stuff were in there. I didn't take this car for a joy ride. So I know people like to roast me whenever these things aren't spotless. I'm like, I'm not responsible for all of that. But there's that three liter turbocharged V6 engine. Again, 349 horsepower, 369 torque. I'm gonna see for myself here. Right, I'm gonna stop being goofy and go ahead and hop on the inside. So nice leather wrapped steering wheel here. There's the horn there. I like how they have the S emblem to go on this kind of brushed aluminum that matches the rest of this black leather. Now to the screen here, we do get all of our settings right in there. So for radio, AM, FM, XM. And then we do have Bluetooth audio. And I believe we get CarPlay and Android Auto standard here. And I'll leave it in the description below. Y'all can read that just to clarify. Cause I always look all the stuff up after I do the videos just to be sure on certain things. But I like to just walk through things here kind of like I was just getting in it for the first time but the navigation screen right there destinations you can go ahead and find your shortcuts use voice recognition all that jazz and then your vehicle settings are in here so data efficiency assist lights and whatnot are there you can set the brightness of the interior lights which is pretty cool and then you can set the, the rain sensor as well and your driver assistance, all of that is here. We do get the adaptive cruise. And then you have the active lane keep assist here. So if you want to have that any which way, you can adjust that. And then to connect your phone, pretty easy to do. Connect phone, new connection. It'll search for your phone. It should walk you right through it once it finds it, which sometimes takes a while. And then vehicle settings in here, if you ever want to change your units, I'm having deja vu, I just did this. Go to your regular settings, I'm sorry. So if you ever want to change your units, go in here and then you can change all of that there. And then I'm just gonna go straight to the backup camera. I'm gonna scroll through this if you need to know where it is. Audi systems are something, there's a lot in there and a lot of the times you're not gonna use 80, 90% of it. But there's the backup camera, guidelines follow you, you turn the steering wheel, we have that 360 view as well, front camera there. And then hazards, I like how that flashes with you when that's on. And then we do have, again, dual zone climate controls to go with that rear automatic climate control there. So we can set the three zones, set the rear, which I like, or sync that. And adjust fan speed here, fan direction on either side. So if you want on the feet and the face here, just on the face here, you can do that. And then auto, if you want to have that on this side or off on this side or whatever, you can do that. That's what I like about Audi's systems. The more complex ones are you can actually be pretty adjustable with them in terms of the airflow and the direction. But three stage heated front seats for the driver, front passenger, and then you can just cut the whole system off there. I gotta show you all this. I got kind of distracted. Uh, that possum is just sitting there eating some sort of dead animal. But anyways, now we can go through the drive select here. So that'll kind of go get you through your drive mode. You have off-road, comfort, auto, or dynamic. 
Now, I like to keep it in dynamic because with this sport exhaust, it just makes it sound so menacing. I love that. Auto stop toggle, traction control, toggle parking sensors, downhill brake control, and then we can go ahead and get the display off by hitting that bottom right button. 12 volt USB-A, push button start, key fobs are there. And for the volume, we can adjust that here, up, down, click it to turn the audio off, and we can use that as a tune knob to go through that. And then we can go through track list as well, but we're in a different setting. Now for the shifter, hit the button, pull down for drive, and then we can pull all the way up for reverse, tap down for neutral, and then in drive, we can kind of just tap up a little bit for neutral from there. Press P for park, pull up on the electronic parking brake to engage it, hit the brake, press it down to disengage, Bottle holders are here. Storage compartment with a USB-C port. And then here are the lights. And then we have a separate button for the sunshade and then one for the roof here, which I like that they separated those. Because with these kind of one-touch buttons, you can kind of, they're a little finicky, so you'll think you're just putting the sunshade back, but then you're putting the roof back or whatever. So I like that it separates the two. But a nice, big panoramic sunroof and it goes all the way back there so pretty impressive there's a look at the back seat from up here and another good thing about separate buttons are i can start closing the roof and then close the sunshade at the same time without having to wait on either or nice vanity mirror i like how we have the led light up top there to shine down and then back to the steering wheel Blinkers are here, lane keeping system. You can toggle that by hitting that button. And then we can toggle the high beams there on, turn off and then flash there. And then over here, we do have the automatic rain sense wiper. So one time off, auto low high. We can adjust the auto wipers here. And then we do have a rear wiper. So we can turn that on or off there and then push back for that rear wiper fluid, pull up for that front wiper fluid. The paddle shift is behind the steering wheel and then for the cruise control i just figured out how audi's cruise controls work with the adaptive cruise on here so push all the way back for off and then you can kind of like turn it on by doing that and then you can resume and cancel by lightly pressing it set the speed there adjust speed up or down there and then set the distance for the adaptive cruise there and i'll show you in that bottom right hand corner now it's in the middle, but it'll show you that distance there. Now you can go through the sub menus of the gauge cluster in the middle here. And then within each one, you can scroll through. You can actually use the scroll bar to go through everything. And then you can go through your actual settings for each one there, which is pretty neat. And then you can change your actual gauge cluster view there. Heated steering wheel toggles here. And then we can go through volume, up or down. And then that's that same function as that knob down there in terms of tuning. And then you can click that for mute, but Bluetooth button for your phone, voice recognition there. But next let's go ahead and take this 2023 Audi SQ5 out on the road for a test drive. 